In this video, I'm going to show you how to make bars and lines and rectangles and things like that with a linear mesh grid. So let's go ahead and get started. I cheated a little bit and already opened up a, an editor window and initialized MATLAB. So at this point, the next thing we should do is define our mesh grid. So let's make this a physical width of, let's say, 10, a physical height of 10. And let's use, in this case, 100 points horizontally. And then for the vertical, we'll use our technique where we'll calculate that number of points from the previous. And what this does is it ensures, as I change these two numbers for physical height and width, it ensures that we have as square of cells in our grid as possible. Okay. So that sets up our grid. That's really all the information we need in order to calculate everything about our mesh grid. So the mesh grid is the next step. So the first thing I'll do is I will calculate the cell size or the grid resolution and the width of the cell is the physical width of our grid divided by the number of points. And likewise, the physical height of a cell on our grid is the physical height of the grid itself divided by the number of points. From there, we can calculate our axis vectors. And we'll go 0 0.5 to nx minus 0 0.5 times dx. And I will copy and paste that and just change my x's to y's. And then finally, the mesh grid command that actually calculates the mesh grid. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. This won't actually do anything that we can see, but if there's any errors or typos, uh, we would have seen that. At this point, it might do us good to look at our mesh grid and visualize it. So let's look at our mesh grids. We will create two subplots, uh, left and right. So our subplot will be one tall, so one subplot up and down, two subplots left and right, and we're going to plot to the first one. We'll use the image SC, because I like to use that for looking at digital data arrays. Uh, X, A, Y, A. Always do an axis equal tight after that, and then a color bar so that we know what colors correspond to what numbers. We know the physical width of our grid is 10, so we should see our axes go from roughly 0 to 10. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, so this is X. Let's go ahead and give that a title just so we can remember what we're looking at. X, and let's go ahead and draw Y. So I'll copy and paste that code. We're going to the second subplot. We're going to plot the Y mesh grid parameter, and we'll title it with Y. Okay, and we can see that our X array is increasing going left to right, and our Y mesh grid is increasing top down. Okay, now let's start building things. Let's say we want to make a vertical bar. In this case, maybe we'll go vertically of some width. How can we do that? So create vertical bar. Let's do it this way. We're looking at our grid and we see all of these positions in X. Let's calculate an X1, or not calculate, but define an X1 and an X2, like a start and stop, and we'll fill in all the numbers going vertically. So we'll just create an X1. Maybe that is 1.1, and an X2, maybe that's 2.5. And so we want to fill in everything from 1.1 to 2.5. So we'll call that B. And so we're going to want to fill in everywhere that our big X parameter is greater than or equal to X1 and our X parameter less than or equal to X2. And just for visual appeal, I like to put that in parentheses, but that's actually not necessary. Let's go ahead and visualize this. So now what we'll do, let's make our subplots too tall and too wide. So we'll still be looking at our actual mesh grid in the top two, but now we're going to visualize what we've made down below that. So visualize object that we've made. And let's go 
let's say that this is two subplots tall, one subplot wide, and we're going to the second one. And you'll see what that does when we image it. So let's look at B, and we'll give that a title B. Let's go ahead and run it. So you see what it's done is it's showing us our mesh grids, and now it's also showing us our B centered down the bottom. And we said from about 1.1 to 2.5, and that seems to be about where it's starting and stopping. Well, in fact, it will exactly do that. And so now just by controlling X1 and X2, we can adjust the position of that bar. We can move it way over. We can make it way wide. Let's, uh, let's end it at 8, and maybe we'll start it at 4. And now we see that our bar goes from 4 to 8 and all the way vertically. Now, it'd be real easy just to turn this on its side. We do everything we did with X, we'll do for Y. So let's go ahead and try that. Uh, instead of X1, we'll do a Y1 and Y2. And we'll just change all the X's for Y's. And let's look at that. Now we have a horizontal bar going from a Y value of 4 to 8. And in fact, we can do all four of those at the same time. So let's go ahead and copy and paste those. Let's give it an X1 and an X2. And let's go from 2 to 5, let's say. Now in here, I'm going to copy and paste just so I don't have to retype. And change these Y's now to X's. Okay, now we're making a rectangle. And we've defined the limits of this rectangle. The left is at position X1. The right is at position X2. The top is at position Y1. And the bottom is at position Y2. So it's a whole different way to define rectangles. And this does put geometries very accurately on the grid. So that's all for this video.